Hal, open the pod bay doors. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to take a look at external radio modules for our Flipper Zero. And first of all, we're going to start by taking a look at what's on board a Flipper, what type of radio it's using. They call it the sub one gigahertz radio. Yes, uh, the radio chip they're using, the CC1101, is actually quite an interesting chip because it's extremely versatile. Um, not only does it do many different modes of modulation, uh, it also has a very wide uh, operating frequency range from 300 megahertz all the way up to 1000 megahertz, or which is one gigahertz, and hence the name sub one gigahertz. I actually like to call it a UHF radio because it's operating in the ultra high frequency or UHF band. And uh, yeah, so there you go, guys. Now, why it's so important to use an external radio module. The flipper is a very cute design, but it also had to meet FCC approval, which it actually has, believe it or not when it operates on just 433 or these license-free remote control uh, frequencies. Now, the internal antenna would be resonant or centered on 433 megahertz, which is what they actually post right there. As you drift away to a higher or lower frequency from 433, the antenna is not going to become, uh, it's not going to be very sensitive. It's not also not going to, not, not actually good to transmit a, say, 900 megahertz uh, frequency into that antenna. You're probably going to have a really bad SWR, a lot of reflected power, and you can actually damage the radio internally by doing that. So what do we do? Well, thanks to the GPIOs on your flipper, we can go to external radio modules, which actually use the exact same chip there it is there that square chip in the in in the center of that circuit board now what's really cool about these external radios is they're really easy to get and really really cheap this is ten dollars on amazon this whole thing with the antenna of course the antenna that it comes with is centered also at 433 but you can connect other antennas because now we have an sma connector which is a universal connector for radio, high frequency radio connections. And uh, so what I got here, this is the one off of Amazon. Here's another one off of Amazon that uh, the same one. And I just wired up seven wires. I plugged those into my GPIOs and I'll show you later. This is working, uh, working great. Now, the first one I bought was this one and I bought it online from a company in Germany and they call themselves your e e e design. Uh, they call it a booster. It's actually not a proper name for this because it's, it's not an amplifier. It's not boosting. The boost is coming from your bigger antenna, your higher gain antenna. Now, basically what they've done is that they've just gone on Amazon and they bought that blue, you know, they bought the radio module and they made a little interface circuit board of their own, which they stamped their name all over. And they also printed a very nice little 3D printed case, which is kind of cool, nice orange, looks nice on the flipper and whatever. But uh, I actually, I give them a, a D minus on their design, on the circuit board design, because there is absolute major flaw. Um, <laughs> okay. This pin here, the very last pin, that one, is five volts. And if you look closely in there, I'll try to get this to focus. That five volt pin is touching the ground of this SMA connector. And this flexes up and down. See that? It, you know, and see how that's moving a bit? So what happened was I first installed this on my flipper when I first got it. And the flipper kept rebooting. And I was like, going, like, what is going on with 
my flipper rebooting, it's it's not liking this this radio module. That's what I thought. Like it's crashing, causing it to reboot. And then I noticed whenever I kind of touch the antenna, the flipper would reboot. And that's when I I took it a closer look at the thing and I realized, you know, that's five volts and that's that's ground and it, it's shorting it out. So and here's what else got me about these guys. Let's go over and look at their site here. Um, here here's their site. I, I'm not endorsing them. I, I paid for this myself. They didn't send this to me. But uh, when you go down here, it was right here. Let's start that up again. It shows to turn the five volts on, even though they don't use five volts. It's actually using the three volts. So yeah, kind of strange anyways. Enough of that. The radio works. If you want to go out and buy one from them for $50, go right ahead. But I would turn the five volts off. And also you might even want to cut that last pin off just so you don't short your flipper. Because shorting the five volts rail on your flipper is actually a really bad thing. That could actually damage your flipper. So that's why I give them a D minus. I wasn't happy with the design. It's just anybody that designs something that bad with a shortened power route, power to ground uh, that easily. I mean, like, just come on, guys. Like, use your head. I mean, anybody that has any design sense should know better than that. Okay. Anyways, enough of that. Let's uh, go over and I'm going to show you over here on GitHub. There's the blue board, the one that the Euro guys are using, and there's the one I got off of Amazon, the green board. They are wired slightly differently, so you need to be observant of that because I wired mine based on theirs when I first got it, and it didn't work, and then I did some research, and I found, sure enough, the green board has a little bit of a different pinout. And let's go over and, whoops, wrong one. Let's go here and we scroll down. There's the blue one and see it's 10 bucks and 550 shipping, but really, really cheap. These things are just dirt cheap, um, but amazing what you can do with them. And uh, yeah, we'll get over to that soon. Okay, guys, now I'm going to stop the video and I'll be right back. We're going to attach the remote uh, radio module and start doing some testing. Okay, so there we go. We have the uh, external radio module mounted and we go in here and we go sub gigahertz and we go down here to radio settings and it says external. That is external radio. It seems to automatically turn on external when I, I plug in which is cool and external five volts, make sure that is off or otherwise you're gonna have problems with using the Euro one. So yeah, I learned my lesson. Luckily it didn't blow up my flipper. <laughs> so you go over here, you go read and now we're scanning 315. And uh, one thing that I'm gonna show you, I have an external antenna on the roof of my house on a rotor and I wired that down here in the UHF section on the antenna. And I started picking up stuff all over my neighborhood. I don't even know what it, well, I know what a lot of them are. Um, garage door openers. And there's a lot of Princeton 24-bit. Um, and the, a lot of these remote controls use Princeton. And as you'll see here, see there it captured that one. And uh, here it is again. And... I'm pressing now button number two. Now, if you take a close look at that, button number one was 5155. The 5155 is the unique address of the remote. The 03, that byte, that represents button number one on all of these remotes. And button number two is always 0C. So, I was receiving a lot of different Princeton remotes out there and it was always ending with 03 or 0C. So I realized that the 03 is on and the 0C is the off button on the two button remotes. So if you capture 
um, you can edit these files. You can go in, you can take the memory card out of your flipper and you can actually edit these files. So if you were to capture, say, a particular address and you wanted to um, send an off command instead of an off on command or vice versa, you could just go in there and modify the 03 to 0C and send it back and you would be turning off whatever we received that was turning on. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Uh, gas station signs, okay, use Princeton 24-bit. And there's the remote they use, okay. Now, they talk about the code. See that code up there, the 20110120? Like, what the heck does that mean? And you go over here. And it shows the circuit board of the gas station remote. And there it is, the 20110120. And it's just like, okay. And then there it shows the receiver. You have to set those, they, they solder them in. And then that looked really familiar to me. When I took this remote apart, this is from, from a, a, a 12 channel um, remote control receiver. We'll get into that later. But I bought it actually to use to detonate fireworks. But there it is there. And I take the remote up, apart and I look at the back of it and I'm like going like, holy smokes, does that not look the same? Look at that. So what do I do? I, I made my jumpers exactly the same as the default gas station remote. And I'll show you in a minute, but this one here, see that, that that's what it came as default, 5155, because of the way they got the jumper set in it. And this one actually was different too, but I set my jumpers up exactly like that. And, um, I have to stop the video. Hold on, guys, and I'll put this remote back, and I'm going to show you something. Okay, guys, we're back, and there's the up command for gas station sign. And look at the key. Zero 01, or basically 1F7103. Remember, 03 is 1, or the first key. And, uh... They're using as a default 1F71, 1F71. So let's go back here to read. And we just put the battery in this remote, button number one, 1F7103. I configured this remote exactly like that one that I saw, those jumpers, and guess what? I have deciphered their code. This remote is working exactly the same, sending out the exact address and control word, which is 03 for button number one, as the gas station remote. And there is 0C. So the six commands that gas station remote uses are these. There you go. We have them all coming off of our remote with the default address, which is 1F71. So yeah, guys, this, this, now you don't need a flipper. This can actually work the gas station sign too, because I've configured the jumpers inside. Basically, these are all, all, all these remotes are all the same. And uh, that's what I've been discovering. You know, the more you start digging in and all thanks to flipper, flipper has been very a helpful tool for, um, discovery of uh, radio systems, how they operate. But um, yeah, this is really cool, guys. And these are the six commands. And what I found was button number one, which is the up, um, the 03. You press that one five times, and that causes the sign to go into a programming mode. It'll start to flash. So there you go, guys. <laughs> Remember, you heard it here first on how this stuff actually works. And it's not, I'm not just putting some video together, some guy randomly, some random dude doing something. 
I actually figure this stuff out, how it actually works, and I show you and teach you how it's, how it's done. And if you like my videos, give me some thumbs up, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, and if you want to know a little bit more about uh, this Radio Remote Princeton, there's several of them on uh, Amazon. This one is actually for, it's only 31 bucks. It's really low cost. It gives you 12 channels. And this is actually the re receiver board with 12 relays on it. I've used it to detonate fireworks. And I'll show you that in another video. Um, and here is actually, I'll show you right now, when I push this button. Actually, that's the wrong remote. <laughs> they both look the same. Here we go. There we go. You see the light coming on there. It's receiving. And there we are, the default gas station uh, remote, 1F71. Uh, and I'll do that again. And as you saw there, flippers actually catching these two. And I can also use flipper to do the same thing with that external radio module so there you go guys yeah these are on uh amazon real cheap 31 bucks pretty good deal if you ask me because of what it's capable of doing controlling 12 different channels and these remotes as i just demonstrated open them up you can change the jumpers inside and you can become the same address as the gas station the 1f71 and uh, go out and have some fun. Okay, guys. Later. Here we are up on the roof, guys. And I'm swinging around my UHF Yagi. That's it on the end there. And yeah, that's a camera, too. And I'll show you guys in a minute when we go inside. He's trying to balance here up on the roof. Well, I'm up real high. Okay, that's at the end. I'm gonna go back. And yeah, guys, when you got an antenna like that up high, and you can rotate it. It's a directional beam. You can pick up things miles away. Okay, guys, I'm going back down now.